Hello, this is Abigail with the Spuff of Legend. We're doing another episode on the Click Team Fusion game. We're going to add a few more concepts to the game. Concepts that uh, use bits of Click Team Fusion that I think are good to know that we did not cover in the first game. Uh, I, you'll notice that the game is exactly the same with three minor exceptions. I added a to-do list uh, to keep me focused on what we're going to be doing. And I added two more uh, sprites. There is uh, Silver Wolf and Medicinal Warlock's avatars because they are going to be the placeholder items I use to add into the game. Now, the first thing I want to note before we get started, the more complicated the game gets, the more likely that weird bugs are going to start cropping up, and uh, it'd be even worse if we were planning on, you know, marketing this as a real game or not, but there will possibly be times that I'm just staring at the editor screen going, why didn't that work, and having to run simulations and stuff. So just letting you know, but uh, I do know how to do all these things, and I ran it through once in a practice run, so we should be okay. The first thing we're going to do is expand the canvas, because as fun as it is to have a game like this, where we just, and I guess there's also a good chance to show the game as it was. Um, as, as nice as it is, most games don't do this anymore. You, uh, you, have a, you have a camera that you can actually move around so that I can actually leave the frame and head over here. So that's a good thing that you will need to know. So let's do that. It's going to be happening up here in the game frame. Uh, first, let me show you even more important than that. If we wanted to change the size of everything, this is the window. The window is the entire game. If I were to adjust these elements, all three of these would change their size. Uh, we don't want to do that. I'm fine with the window. I just want to change the game frame because I don't want the U win screen to get bigger. I just want this to get bigger. I want there to be space over here. So let's go to here. Uh, let's see, let's make it a bit longer. I'm okay with how high it is. So let's change it to 800. See what happens. Now the game, now the game window is longer. Uh, but you'll notice that you now have these little dashed lines. Um, and if you actually boot the game up, you will see that it's actually the same length as it was before. Uh, nothing too special happens. The reason I can't come back is because I just fell to my death. Uh, went over here and then we, so. Uh, we can fix that, straightly enough, by doing that. But you'll notice that the camera is still rigidly locked in where we were before, and we can fix that by going to Control-E. Uh, we're going to add a new condition. And notice where I grabbed Always. It took me a while to find it when I first started doing this. I didn't even know there was not Always because it was hidden over here in Special Conditions. Always. And we always want to... And now, uh, I don't know how to help you guys remember this. You just kind of have to. This is how you mess with the camera. It's over here in Scrollings. And then you're going to want to center the horizontal uh, thing with, where is it, uh, position, x-coordinate of the only guy ever. So right now, the x-coordinate will be permanently centered on the x-coordinate of the only guy ever, uh, but he is a two-dimensional object, so we're going to center his vertical position on his y-coordinate. And so now, if we play the game, we should see that we can now move our ear. Oh, look, we've got more screen. And that is how you adjust the length of the screen. And let's make it a little bit longer so that that actually means something, because you can barely tell at this point that we made it longer. Let's change it to 1,000, not 10. There we go, a bit longer. Add some stuff to actually happen over there. Let's clone this bad boy. Move him right there, let's say, like that. Now, test the game again. Try to avoid Dapper, because I don't want to die. Man, at some point I need to fix that bug, this is getting really annoying. Oh, whoops, I understand what just happened there. Uh, let's go to Control E. Oh, so we didn't make that a we didn't make that a group. We made other groups last time. So we just have a barrier four that is not doing anything. So when the only guy ever collides with barrier four, I want to make the only guy ever bounce. And before we test it, so that we didn't have that problem again where I can't actually get up there, let's just start there. All right, we are good to go. Firing memes. And that is actually something that we're going to work on next. Um, we're going to add a critical hit to this game. It's going to be a different sprite. It's not going to be this little M, but we can clone him and use him as a baseline. Uh, instead of meme 2, we're going to rename him 
Gyoku, and Gyoku is going to be our critical hit. Which you can fix by going here. Uh, let's make him a nice light blue. Okay, looks good. And there's no real need for a critical hit, but it gives me the opportunity to show you guys what a counter is. And we're going to put it here so you can see it in game. Uh, counters are one of the most versatile items in Click Team Fusion. You can do so many different things with them. We're going to be using them in two different ways in this little custom game. So let's uh, look at their values. By default, the value starts at zero and uh, minimum value of infinity and maximum value of essentially infinity. Instead of all that, we are going to make it go from zero to ten. And let's show you how to mess with counters. So we saw that our initial value was zero. So right now it would just stay at zero all the time, but we can make the counter change by going to this. Every, we're gonna do every one millisecond. Every millisecond, where is our counter? Hello counter. Every millisecond, we are going to add one to the counter which means that right now, uh, after 10 milliseconds, the counter would max out and that'd be it. But instead, we're going to add, when the, compare the counter to a value, when the counter equals 10, which is its maximum, then we are going to set the counter to zero. Now, if we run the frame, we should be able to see. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. So the, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really tough to see because it's moving so fast, but the counter is counting really, really, really quickly between uh, 0 and 10. We just died. Uh, but then what do we want to actually do with that? We want to go up to, upon pressing space bar, insert, compare the counter to a value. Is the counter different from, hmm, say 5? If the counter is not playing 5, then we're going to shoot a meme. But upon, upon pressing a space bar, when the counter is equal to five, then the only guy ever is going to launch an object called a Gyoku. It's gonna behave exactly the same. So let's see if this works. Ah, I died. And then, so what happened there, the reason that I didn't go to the U win screen is because I played the frame. Sometimes you want to play the frame instead of the whole application. If you're editing, like, level 10, you don't want to start over at level 1. We want to start over uh, whenever we try this. So, shooting memes, killing dappers. There they are. Oh, did you see that? Got some Gyokus. Plays TV, stop, I'm not playing a real game. Darn it. Okay. Um, there we go. So we managed to get that to work. So that is a way that you can use a counter. Um, I think I'm going to change this counter to... Uh, sorry. Edit. Let's see what happens if we set the counter to 10. I don't know if you noticed, but whenever we press the space bar... Uh, with Gyoku, um, we occasionally would fire two in a row if I was pressing too quickly. We wouldn't want that to happen with a critical hit. So let's see what happens if we set it to 10. It's possible that I will literally never fire a Gyoku. So we might have to change it back. Because when it hits 10, it automatically switches back to 9. I was hoping maybe we could get a tick in there, but yeah, okay, it looks like we're going to have to change that back to 5. Fair enough. I was just trying to show how uh, to do something with counters, so that's pretty good. We're going to be having a different counter later. But let's go over here to M. Uh, so we have expanded our canvas. We can now fire Gyokus on crit, and we want to add a health bar. Oh, I forgot about these two guys. There is actually something else that we want to do in there. Silver Wolf Enemy. We'll worry about that later. For the time being, let's add a health bar so we can stop dying the millisecond Dapper hits us. And that is uh, going to be another counter. Let's get this counter out of the way. It's supposed to be hidden. Insert counter. So this counter is a number. We're going to fix that. Oh, let's let's change. So how much health do we want the player to have? Uh, not three. 
because that's minimum, you die at zero, and you max out at three. You have three hit points in this game. And look at type. We can change the type of, uh, if we, let's see, let's, vertical bar, looks like that. Uh, they look the same because we haven't actually changed the colors yet. Let's change it to gradient. Um, I'm okay with red, meaning you're close to death, and only guy is white, so let's do it like that. How does that look? That looks pretty sexy. Let's put it right here. Make it tiny. All right. Now, if we actually ran it right now, it's not going to follow us. Oh, it's not, it's not even going to be visible, because we have to change the initial value to 3. One more time. Still not visible, because we have not set uh, any meaning for it. It doesn't actually exist as a thing. So let us go to new condition. Or we don't even need to, because we have an always already. We are always going to select the position of this counter... Uh, relative to the only guy ever. Uh, we don't want it up there, though. We want it down here. So let's see what happens when we run that. So there we go. Ah, there's our counter. Not the sexiest counter, I will admit. It doesn't look great, but that's alright. We've got it. I want to show how to use this bad boy, because you notice that Dapper was still able to kill us. We haven't actually programmed anything in there. Where is the thing where Dapper can kill us? There it is. If Dapper collides with the only guy ever, instead of setting our speed to zero and killing us, we are going to uh, subtract one from the counter. And then we're going to set it so that when this counter, compare it to a value, when it equals zero, that is when we will set our maximum value to zero and destroy us. Um, destroy. So let's try it now. Create new objects. I shouldn't run frames. I should run the entire thing. So there's us. You see our health went down by one. And now we're at one hit point. Oh no, we died. That. Dapper, kill me. Thank you. There we go. Looking good. Place TV still on. Uh, we now have a health bar. Perfect. That's what we needed. Um, so that's that's just showing a couple of the different ways that you can use counters. There are other uses for counters. The other um, popular use for a counter that I wasn't really going to show in this game, but I will actually just mention it, is treating it like a Boolean toggle. If you set a counter so that its maximum value is 1 and its minimum value is 0, then you can make stuff happen and be like, when the player grabs the diamond, change the counter to one, and then while the counter is one, some special enemy, the diamond retriever, will only spawn then, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to show that there's a lot of different ways that you can use counters uh, efficiently. Um, so we've got that, we've expanded our canvas, uh, we now have a critical hit. Uh, we have a health bar for the player. Let's add another enemy, uh, mainly because a particularly good place to hide from uh, Dapper is down here, and so we're going to use Silver Wolf as an enemy to demonstrate a new form of movement. Uh, so Dapper is a bouncing ball. Only guy ever is uh, eight directions. No, he's platform. And we are going to show off the path mechanic because the path mechanic is very good. It's uh, for objects that are just going to uh, move in a certain way and never stop. So we see we're going to move them over here. So we're going to set it, if the, if the audio of my voice changed, because I'm trying to look real close to make it a straight line. Is that a straight line? Yeah, it looks like it. All right, so he's going to move over here. We want him to reverse at end. It's going to cause him to move all the way back over here. And then we are going to loop the movement. And 50 is a little bit fast. Let's see what he looks like when he's moving at 30. Don't click try movement. I don't know why. I can never get any of the try movement. Well, let's see what happens. It, it, I never can get this to work. Yeah, see, I, I don't know what it is about the try movement, but it, it strips everything else out of the game, and that almost always causes the game to fail, in my experience. So the best way to try the movement is to boot the game up here. There is Silverworth. It's Wolf. He is rocking down there. I don't think he does anything at the moment. Yeah, we're buds, but we're not going to be buds for much longer. Uh, we're going to go to E. Go to New Condition. 
Um, and we want when Silver Wolf collides with the player, then where did we, where's the thing with Dapper? Subtract one from counter, subtract one from counter. All right, so Silver Wolf should be able to kill us now after three hits, just like Dapper. Took hit, took a hit. Ah, uh, we died. I'm not even sure which one of them got the kill on that. So, Silver Wolf can now die. I mean, he can kill, but he can't die. So one thing that might be kind of cool, let's, because we don't actually have a reason for our critical hit right now, how about Silver Wolf can only die to critical hits? So if Gyoku collides with Silver Wolf, uh, then we will destroy him. He does not currently have an animation for that, so let's go in here. Uh, copy frame. Disappearing. Zoom out, frame one, uh, we changed, what did we change it to? It was like five or something. Let's see what five looks like. So we got frame one. What color does this guy blow up with? Um, eh, yellow. More amazing explosion animations from Abacus. Feel free to hire me if you ever need an explosion animator. Wow, that is that is a darn good explosion. A little bit, little bit slow. Let's, let's boot that speed up a little bit. Mm, one more time, up to fifteen. There we go. Looks good. And did we already add the code to make him? No, we just said when Gyoku hits thingy. Where are you, Silver Wolf? We are going to destroy you. And Silver Wolf is going to be a little bit difficult because we got him. And so did you see that a bunch of M's went through him before we were able to kill him with the uh, before we were able to kill him with the critical hit. Gotcha. I win. Plays TV, lagging my game again. But, okay, so there we go. We have another enemy. He behaves in a different style. Place TV is showing up to let me know that I closed the game out. And now we want to add an additional warlock into the game. We're going to put him up here. And let's make him so he's actually facing the uh, game screen. And he's not going to be another enemy. He's going to be our best friend. He is a health station. So if you take damage, you want to go visit him. If you collide with medicinal warlock then we're going to set your counter to three. Let's see what happens when we do that. All right, I must go Medicinal Warlock and fight the Dapper Apple. Oh, I took damage. I want to get there without getting killed. Thanks, man. All right, so slightly more complicated game now. Place TV showing up lagging my game. Ignore that. You won't have Place TV lagging your game. And I win. All right, that was pretty quick. Go away, Place TV. Let's see what 